Hello, and welcome back to the Calm and Connected podcast. I'm your host, Janine Halloran, and today I want to talk about using a question box to practice conversation skills. So I used to use question boxes when I was a school counselor. Um, When I think back to my time as a school counselor, my best memories are of laughter and connection during lunch groups. Each day, I would actually end up eating lunch four times a day because fourth grade had lunch twice and fifth grade had lunch twice. And so it would always be amusing to my students when I would say, this is my fourth lunch of the day. And I absolutely loved having those conversations and those connections with kids during lunch group. It was a great way to get to know a lot of students throughout the school year. And it was a great way for the kids to meet new peers and potentially make new friends. So the way that our fourth and fifth grade school was set up is that we were actually having two other K to three schools combine into one. So sometimes kids didn't know one another. And so it was a great way for them to learn about each other, to make connections with other people, to find some new friends. And so I loved that opportunity to help kids make those connections. But what I also found was really helpful was the natural opportunity that we had to practice conversations. So some lunch groups, just by the nature of the kids in the group and how people like to interact, were very games focused. So we would play Uno or Connect Four or different games like that. But some groups were really focused on communication and conversations. And so to make those conversations a little bit easier to start, I would have a question box. So in the middle of the table every week, there would be a question box. And I would just get this box from Michael's or Hobby Lobby or the Dollar Tree or um, just a tiny little box. And in the box, I would have three to four questions that I would write down every week. So, um, and it would be the same questions that I would use all week long for the entire lunch group set of kids that I was going to see because not a lot of kids went to more than one lunch group occasionally they would be able to bring another person and so a kid might go twice but that was kind of rare so it actually worked out really nicely that I was able to just use the same set of questions for the entire week and so the questions were things that would spark conversations and were kind of silly and fun you know something like what superpower do you wish you had and why or when was the last time you did something silly or what's your favorite game to play or sometimes we'd even ask would you rather questions so just silly fun ways for kids to connect as time went on sometimes those questions got a little bit more deep because we got a chance to be more vulnerable with each other at over time you know kids would sometimes even talk about you know maybe their parents were divorced or they were going through a hard time or there was a problem with friends so sometimes those conversations would get a little bit deeper but especially at the beginning I tried to keep it a little bit Um, more lighthearted and we would just have conversations about silly things that kids like to talk about and during these conversations what was really cool is just naturally we would work on certain social skills so we'd work on things like waiting for their turn to talk and working on listening and waiting for that space in the conversation so that you could jump in and and say the thing that you wanted to stay. We worked on staying on topic because that can be kind of a challenge. And we worked on not monologuing because it's so easy for, you know, for those really talkative, gregarious kids to sort of take over the group. And then it's, you know, 15 minutes later, and they're still sort of talking about what they want to talk about. And so you'd have to be really careful about making sure that everybody gets a little bit of airtime during lunch groups. For those kids who seemed a little bit more reluctant and quiet and a little bit more hesitant to speak, I would actually talk with them directly and say, well, what do you think? You know, I'd ask them point blank, you know, trying to get them involved into the conversation instead of them sort of trying to figure out where to get in. I was inviting them to have that opportunity to share the floor. And, you know, there were also those kids sometimes who would answer the same thing as the person who just answered. So when I found that that was a pattern for a certain kid, I would try and make sure that they picked the next question and they answered the question instead of waiting for somebody else to go first and hear their answer. And then they would answer and usually just parrot the the answer that the person before them said. But by having them choose the question first, it allowed them to answer honestly and truthfully with their own thoughts as opposed to trying to just mirror what somebody else said. 
What I am really excited about is that this is actually something that can also be used remotely with your students. So this can be a great way as an icebreaker to begin an activity just to make that connection with kids, which I feel is so important, especially when you are remote learning, to make that connection with your students, to make that connection with your clients before you begin and jump into anything, that making sure that they feel seen, they feel heard. And also just as a way to encourage conversations, encourage that social and emotional learning amongst the kids where they get a chance to connect and hear from each other and interact with their peers. Even if it's remote, they get a chance to hear from other kids and hear what they have to say, share their thoughts, that kind of thing. So I love that it can be used remotely. The other thing that I really enjoy is that this can also be used at home, you know, especially for those kids who need practice on conversation skills. They can work on these skills even at dinner. So you put the question box in the middle of the dinner table and they pick out a question and then you all take turns answering it. This is fantastic because it gives kids an opportunity to practice uh, conversation skills and it gives everybody in the family a chance to answer it, which means that you get a, a chance to know each other a little bit differently, a little bit better. At Coping Skills for Kids, I actually have two different resources for you that have conversation starters. There's a free resource called 40 Conversation Starter Questions, and that is free. If you want more questions, they, I also have lunch group questions available as well. So this is a great way to spark communication, to spark conversations with kids just by simply using some questions and getting a little practice and important conversation and communication social skills. So I hope this has been helpful. If you like this podcast, please feel free to share it with your friends and colleagues. Like and subscribe so you can be notified when new episodes become available. And one last thing, please don't forget about yourself. Take a few minutes, have a little fun, and have an awesome day.